Hey all, how's it going? Rich with Burn Social here, back with another awesome video in our printer maintenance series. Let's jump right into the meat of this video. So, do your prints look like this? How about this? This? Maybe this? Look no further. I've got the solutions for your clogging, your under extrusion problems. And I'm going to break it down into four simple steps that you can follow along with with this video. But we're going to start with the easiest problem to diagnose and fix, and work our way down to the harder ones. This is the system that has always worked for me. I'll, I'll include timestamps for when I cover each of these steps in this video. Feel free to skip ahead if you already kind of think you know what it is. But if not, we'll move pretty quickly through them. So let's get into this. So basically these four steps follow in order. We're starting with filament, working our way down to the extruder gear, down the bone tube, and then finally to the hot end. We're tracking the entire path the filament takes to find out where this uh, holdup is. Back with the white shirt today. A couple of changes to the room, a little bit different layout as well. Hopefully you guys like it. Thank you for all your feedback and suggestions so far. Love hearing from you guys. And they definitely help a lot. So let's start from the beginning. So the easiest first step is to check our filament. As you swap out filaments, as you you know transport them, wrap them up and everything, sometimes it'll ac they'll accidentally uncoil. And typically this happens when I get towards the end of filament or a filament roll. Or if I'm not too careful in the very beginning, I'm taking it out. The filament will unwrap itself a little bit. It'll get overlapped, knotted, and start to look like this. It's usually pretty easy to tell if your filament's knotted, but usually you find it out a little bit too late. So be best case scenario if this happens is that the filament just snaps. Or the teeth of the extruder gear start digging into the filament, and that that clogs up the extruder gear, won't allow it to extrude anymore. Um, it also puts a lot of unnecessary strain on the motor. It's an extremely simple fix. All you have to do is take your filament out, unwind it a little bit, um, give it a good 10, 20 feet just to be safe, and then wind it back up as tightly as possible. After that, all you do is put it back in, and you're ready to go. Now on to step number two, which is the extruder gear, or the extruder mechanism. If this gear is spinning and the filament is not moving, one of the first things I'll do is check the teeth on these gears. If it's been a while or you haven't done this before, or you haven't cleaned out this gear before, you're going to see colored filament uh, marks right here. This is where the filament contacts with the gear. Over time, especially if this motor is skipping or the filament isn't moving, it'll start to eat away at the filament and you'll get pieces stuck in between these teeth. The easiest way to clean them is to take a toothpick and then you just go around and quickly push up and down and quickly clean out each channel. There's a deeper channel for the teeth to actually grip the filament. The second thing to observe is this spring. If pushing this arm out causes the filament to move, then you most likely know that this spring is not creating a strong enough force between this bearing and this gear to actually get the filament to grip. If neither of these fixes are working, we're going to move on to the next step. So for step three, working our way down, we started the filament. We went through the extruder mechanism. Nothing seemed to be the problem there. So now we're moving on to the next part of where the filament travels, and that is the Bowden tube. As you can see, mine's blue here because I've already upgraded it. So over time, friction can start to wear on the tube. While you were working on it or while the printer is moving, uh, you can actually get a kink in the, the line. One of the easiest ways to test this is to heat up your printer, remove your filament completely. So you feed your filament in by hand, um, kind of just slowly, uniformly. And as you feed it in, you feel to see if there are any big stopping points, any points of resistance while you're feeding it down before you get to the end. If you have one that's around halfway through, that may or may not be the issue causing this, this uh, blockage. Because the more friction you add into this tube, the more force it actually takes for the motor to push the filament down. That's why you get that clicking, that's the motor skipping as it tries to move. Or why it'll just give up and start eating into the filament. Very simple fix. You can just get uh, replacement Bowden tubes. I get mine extra long and I just cut them down uh, to fit my size of printer and my needs. Um, I'll link these blue ones, these, boat, these Capricorn tubes down below. These are the ones I recommend. They're a lot smoother and I haven't really had any issues with them to date. I usually let my go bone tubes go until they're, uh, they've used their full life and then I'll switch out for these Capricorn ones that I haven't had an issue so far. So let's turn on the printer. So plug your printer in, turn it on, heat your nozzle up, take your filament out, and make sure your nozzle is heated to about the last temperature that you used. So now it's heated up, we're going to take this part off. Alright, so once it's heated up, it should be easy enough to pull to just pull straight out. Here's a closer look at the tubing. Um, at a glance, nothing seems to be wrong. What you're looking for is um, any pinching or deformation right here. You might also be looking for some right before this plunger. 
or you're looking for deformation right at the tip of this nozzle, that would probably be heat deformation or from like a clogging of plastic from before. You're also looking for a buildup of plastic um, right around the end or one of those mushroom or one of those mushroom cones when you pull out your filament. If your filament is really jammed in there, it snapped off. Um, this would actually be indicative of a clog. If you have buildup here, uh, that means there's not this is not flush with the nozzle down below, and it means it was not pushed in far enough. All right, so follow along to step four because we're going to clean out the hot end. Um, just to ensure there's nothing left over and then I'll show you how to put it back in. Alright, so hopefully you found your problem by now. Those are all the easiest problems to fix, less the uh, last one that we're still going to talk about. If you haven't solved your problem, then we're on to step four, the hot end. In this case, it's a little bit more ambiguous. Um, it could be anything from your filament settings, being too too cold or too hot, causing a buildup of filament towards the end, start resulting in a clog. Um, it could be your, that your nozzle is actually too close to the bed. Um, it's trying to push out plastic, it's unable to, so it squishes up and clogs in the nozzle again. That's also a simple fix, even though it's just a little bit more involved than the last steps. I'm going to show you the easiest way to safely and effectively remove a clog. Um, most of the time, if one of my nozzles is clogged, I have enough left over that I'll just replace the nozzle if I'm able to get it the first try. Or I'll link down below to some good sets of replacement nozzles I recommend. And I'll also link down below to a tutorial I recommend, or at least the method I use when leveling my bed. A fail proof works 9 out, or nine out of 10 times sort of thing. Um, I'd also recommend that you install an auto leveler. If you don't have one, I'll be making a video on how to install a BL Touch, which is a little bit more involved printer upgrade, but that will save you tons of time um, never having to level your bed again. So removing your nozzle is easy enough. One of the first things I'll do, if I haven't heated up the nozzle, make sure your nozzle is not heated up when you do this, is remove the silicone sock. It comes around the nozzle. Uh, this is typically just for keeping heat in to work as an insulator. Most printers have this, but make, check to see if yours does. You might be able to remove it with it on, um, but I always like take it off because it makes it a lot easier. I don't want to tear it. Or you can also remove this with tools if that makes it easier. Uh, if you've already heated it up and you don't want to wait for it to cool down, but I wouldn't recommend that as there's some risk of tearing it. And there you want to make sure that your nozzle is again heated up to around 200 degrees, uh, maybe more if the last filament you used was ABS. Um, ABS, TPU, PTG, or something like that. But if you're using PLA, 200 degrees should be fine. So now that's heated up, uh, you can just use an adjustable wrench. Uh, maybe some Robo Grip pliers like I have. And just start unscrewing it. Being very careful not to touch it. You can just drop it on the bed when it falls off. As you get close to getting it out, you're going to have the, uh, the blue clippers that came with your printer handy because what we're going to do is while it's still hot we're going to pull the, uh, the clog out if possible let's get it out and then it actually looks mine looks totally good or mine looks totally okay no clog to be seen you can actually see the white light um, down in the center which means you can see straight through the nozzle but if you were to have uh, filament clogged in all you do is you pinch it with these Careful not to pinch too hard and pull it out. It should come out nice and stringy, like a uh, <laughs> like some fresh or some fresh mozzarella sticks when you tear those apart. You want to take one quick look down through the top of the nozzle, to see if there's any filament in there, or see if there's any filament scooped up against the sides. It does not look to be. It actually everything looks pretty clean to me. If there are some globs of filament down there, I just recommend you take one of the skinnier Allen keys that came with your printer. and shove it down here a couple times while it's heated up making sure to really get the sides uh, if there happens to be any in your threading you need something sharper so there we go easy fix right um, all that's left to do is put the printer back together run a test print and see what comes out so that's what we're going to do now or once you've got this top locked in, or locked in snugly I like to put in the tube or I like to put in the top while the tube is actually or still through it um, that allows when you tighten it, allows the tube, or you to squish the tube a little bit closer to the nozzle. Um, but either way, you're going to want to check if the nozzle is actually snugly in there. So all you have to do, give a little push and wiggle downwards. Um, sometimes I'll grab my robo grips, grip it very gently, as you don't want to cause a kink, um, and just give it a push. 
I think it's in there pretty snugly already, so it shouldn't really be an issue. Just the step that's really important to make sure that your bone tube is flush with your nozzle. Um, you're going to really make sure that you give it a good push. Or give it a good push and have it in as far as you can. Because um, if you have that gap, you're going to have filament build up and you're just going to be back to step one, uh, troubleshooting to see what's wrong with your printer next time it clogs. I recommend heating up the heat block first and then just using tools instead. You don't want to be able you don't want to be touching that no nozzle and have your fingers anywhere near that heat block um, when it's actually heated up. And also you can start a little bit lower. You don't have to actually go up to 200 degrees C. You could start with something like 120, 100 even, um, and see if that works, and just bump it up incrementally. If you have to heat it up that high, it probably means there's a lot of plastic in your nozzle. You should probably go back a step and make sure that you're actually cleaning out those threadings before you put in, or before you put your printer back together. Once you've got this top locked in or locked in snugly, I like to put in the tube or I like to put in the top while the tube is actually or still through it. Um, that allows when you tighten it, allows the tube or you to squish the tube a little bit closer to the nozzle. Um, but either way, you're going to want to check if the nozzle is actually snugly in there. So all you have to do, give it a little push and wiggle downwards. Um, sometimes I'll grab my robo grips, grip it very gently as you don't want to cause a kink. Um, and just give it a push. I think it's in there pretty snugly already, so it shouldn't really be an issue. Just the step that's really important to make sure that your bone tube is flush with your nozzle. Um, you're going to really make sure that you give it a good push. Or give it a good push and have it in as far as you can. Because um, if you have that gap, you're going to have filament build up and you're just going to be back to step one, uh, troubleshooting to see what's wrong with your printer next time it clogs. All right, and that's a wrap. Thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully we solved your problem. Or if you've had a similar issue and solved it a different way, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Like and subscribe shows a little bit of support. Uh, it goes a long way. If you have an awesome idea for an upcoming episode or just a little bit of feedback or you just want to talk through any printing, you can reach us via uh, Facebook, TikTok. It's probably easiest via Instagram or through our site via email. Because of the new year, we're also really pushing our design and manufacturing services. So if you have something you want designed and you can't actually find it online, um, we're more than happy to design that for you. At, as this prints, just to reiterate, it's very important for you to have your bed level. Uh, for this, that's one of the top causes of nozzle clogs. Another one would be uh, the temperature of your hot end. Regarding that, I'm more than happy to make another video based around or based around the Arcura settings that we use. We can do this for. All the materials we use, uh, PLA, PLA+, Plus, ABS, TPU, PETG. We've even used some more, some goofy, less common materials for some custom work we've done recently, which is really cool. That was all trial and error, as we actually weren't able to find any information on that, so we'll definitely be releasing a video with them. Printer comparisons between the printers we own, some printer reviews for some really exciting upcoming printers from a couple of different brands. We're also open to doing film comparisons, so like I, I've used a bunch of my own time. Uh, more recently, it's been Jesse PLA. It's been my uh, my go-to, but for a while when I started out, it was Hatchbox. I have experience using Overture, Sunlu, eSun, and all the rest, so I think I can make a pretty comprehensive video on that. All right, thanks for tuning in. See ya.